Well, welcome back. Our topic today is integrating piecewise functions. Now, this isn't something we specifically spend a ton of time doing in class, so make sure you take good notes and uh, really pause and rewind when you need to. Question one here. A bicycle tire is inflated to 80 psi, is punctured by a thorn at time t equals zero. The rate, so I'm going to highlight that word there, at which the air pressure in the tire decreases by is modeled by p of t, measured in psi per minute, where p is given by the piecewise function defined below here. Question A, find the air pressure in the bicycle tire at t equals 11. All right, so let's just review what we have. We know that at t equals zero, uh, we have 80 psi. So again, that's our initial condition. All right. Whoops, I missed my zero. We have 80 psi at t equals zero. That's my initial condition. The rate at which the air pressure in the tire decreases. So obviously, if the, if the tire is punctured, the pressure is going to decrease, not increase. And notice that they said rate is given in psi per minute. So I just want to make a note to myself that this is psi per minute and that this is a rate. So our question says, find the air pressure in the bicycle tire at t equals 11. So just quickly ask yourself, what do you want your units to be if you are finding the air pressure? Hopefully you're saying you just want PSI. Okay, you don't want PSI per minute, you just want your PSI. So I'm going to set up a function in order to find the pressure um, at 11. And just for the sake of not having a variable here, I'm going to use A of 11, A for obviously air pressure. Okay, so I'm always going to start with my initial amount, which is 80. Okay, now normally we add it on, but there was two things that gave it away. First of all, again, if you puncture your tire, are you losing pressure or gaining pressure? Hopefully you know that you're losing pressure, and if you weren't sure, it even in fact told you that it decreases. Okay, now again, 80, notice, is already in PSI. And I'm finding the PSI, that means I'm going to need to integrate P of T, dt. And if I started with the 80 as my initial condition, my initial time is 0, and I want this answer at time 11. Now, I'm going to have to be a little careful with this function, because you'll notice I can't just integrate P of T from 0 to 11 very easily, because it's a piecewise function. Notice it has a breakpoint at 4, it's broken up into two separate pieces. So watch how we'll have to integrate this. Um, a of 11 is equal to, obviously, the 80 that I started with, minus, and like I said, we're going to have to break this function up, this piecewise, at 4. So I'd have to integrate from 0 to 4 of P of T, which is, of course, this function. So 4 radical t, dt, and add on to that to get the total now from 4 to 11 of my other function, 4 cubed root of 12 minus t, dt. And it would be 80 minus that answer. So in piecewise, I have to be careful and I have to break it up accordingly. So we're going to take our time here and integrate real carefully. Um, obviously, I'm going to keep my 80 out front here. You can probably at this point pause it and see if we get the same thing when we integrate. Uh, so like I said, pause it, and we're just going to integrate this piece and this piece and put them together. Well, hopefully your work is similar to mine, and I'll try to walk you through what I did real quick, but hopefully just a basic integral. Um, I pulled my 4 out, of course, and I said I have t to the 1 half. I added my 2 over 2, which got me t to the 3 halves times 2 thirds. And I pulled that out as an 8 thirds, of course, plugged in my 4 and my 0 to get 8 minus 0 for a total of 64 thirds on this piece. On the second piece, don't be lazy. You need a u sub there. u is 12 minus t. My du is negative dt, which means I pulled this out as a negative fourth, u to the one-third. Add my 3 over 3, so I got u to the four-thirds times three-fourths. Uh, I killed those four, so I've got negative three. Now, I plugged the original back in, so I did not switch my u bounds. If you left this as u, you would have u bounds of probably one and eight. Um, plugged in my 11, plugged in my 4, and got a 45. Now, I just want to make sure we're still cleaning up here. Um, so I should have 80 minus uh, 64 thirds plus 45, uh, which gets me, I'm actually going to clean this up and say this is 80 minus 64 thirds minus 45, if I distribute that negative, 
So I've got 35 minus 64 thirds, uh, which is 105 thirds minus 64 thirds for a total of 41 thirds. So quite a bit of work on these piecewise functions. All right, part B. Find the average rate at which the air is decreasing from the tire between t equals 1 and t equals 11 minutes. So our key word to me that jumps out of the page is the word average. So I am immediately setting up 1 over 11 minus 1 from 1 to 11. Now you don't have to guess, you just have to read. Who are you averaging? It says average the rate. And if you go back and read the problem, we made it very clear that P of T represents the rate. So I am averaging P of T dt. So let me clean this up a little. I've got 1 tenth, the integral from 1 to 11, of P of T dt. Now, again, you can't just throw it out there from 1 to 11 because you have a piecewise function, and there is a break point at 4. So watch again my notation. I'm going to bracket this in. I'm going to have to integrate from 1 to 4 of P of T dt and add onto it the integral from 4 to 11 of P of T dt. All right, I had to take that break point into consideration. Now, at this point, we've already integrated both of these functions just with different bounds. Um, so I'm not concerned at the moment about integrating. We did that on the previous question. I just want to verify my answer uh, that we will be multiplying it by Oops, one tenth in the end there. Okay, so I just wanted, really wanted to watch this set up and note that we had to use two separate integrals because it is a piecewise function with a breakpoint. All right, question two. At 6 a.m., that's t equals zero, a water heater contains 100 gallons of water. So maybe you can picture this in your own house. You have a water tank in the basement or something. The rate of change of water in the water heater, W of t in gallons per hour, where t is measured in hours after 6 a.m., is modeled by this piecewise function. Okay, so again, we have separate breakpoints at 1 and at 2. How much water is in the heater at 8 a.m.? So quite a few things to consider. Let's just slow down again. We have this initial condition. At t equals 0, we have 100 gallons. Um, the other thing they tell us is that this is the rate of change. W of t is the rate of change, and it's in gallons per hour. So I just want to make a note, all of these units are in gallons per hour. This is the rate of change, which is implying that it is the derivative. Um, and t, again, is measured in hours after 6 a.m. So first of all, when they say what is how much water is in the heater at 8 a.m., what time are they even referring to? Well, again, if it's hours after 6 a.m., I would say that's definitely t equals 2 hours after 6 a.m. So let's go ahead and set up a function. Um, how much water? I'm not going to use W for water because they've already stolen the W letter here. I'm just going to use H for heater, I guess. H of 2 is equal to, I'm going to start with my 100 gallons. Okay, so I just want to make a note. It says how much water. I want my, all of my answers to be about gallons. So I have 100 gallons plus... Um, now, what do you have to do to W of T? Well, if it's in gallons per hour and you said you wanted gallons, you clearly have to integrate it from 0 to 2 of W of T dt. Now, notice that it didn't say increasing or decreasing. I don't actually know what's happening here. This number could out turn out to be a negative, which means it's decreasing, or a positive, which means it's increasing. It's changing at different times throughout the day. Now again, because I have a breakpoint at 1, I'm going to have to rewrite this integral as 100 plus, okay, I'm going to add this on the integral from 0 to 1, and that function 0 to 1 goes with this, negative 10 sine of pi t dt, plus the integral from 1 to 2 of 4t minus 4 dt. All right, so just like we did last time, we're going to take some time to integrate this one specifically and maybe not the part B. Um, but let's slow down. Why don't you pause it, carefully integrate. We've got a great U substitution and some bounds to work with. Pause it, see if we get the same thing. Well, I hope you've really taken the time to pause it and uh, really help yourself here. Um, hopefully I can read through my work and see if you've got the same thing. I said my U is pi over T. My DU then is pi DT, so I get DU over pi. I pulled that out up front along with this negative 10 here, so I've got negative 10 over pi. I'm integrating the sine of u. And just ask yourself, I think it's positive cosine, and the derivative of 
positive cosine um, would be a negative sine. So then I've got my negatives canceling. I've got 10 over pi cosine of u. I changed the bounds this time just to show you you can leave the u and change the bounds or substitute the original in and leave the bounds. Uh, so I've got 10 over pi cosine of pi minus cos of 0, which gets me negative 2 or negative 20 over pi. Then I went through and did this side, which was no, nothing fancy, no u sub, and I just integrated and got 2. So for my final answer, um, I've got the 100 I had minus the 20 over pi plus the 2. So I would say that's one over, 102 minus 20 over pi. And again, I integrated this. I was finding how much water is in the tank, so I just want to note that these are gallons. So for this last part on B, um, very similar to question 1, it says find the average rate of change of the water in the heater from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. So at this point, I am looking for a perfect setup. Um, I don't need you to evaluate it. Like I said, we spent time integrating the first one, similar to question one. But I am looking for the perfect setup and where you're going to break it up into separate integrals. So I'll be looking for this in class tomorrow. Have a great night.